many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition? This is a difficult question to answer because Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition isn't for sale anymore. It was never available at local or online retailers and was only offered on the Hasbro Toy Shop online store for a few short hours. Now the only way to purchase a Mythic Edition is by buying it off the secondary market at a considerable markup. So I suppose there are two possible titles to this video instead. Was it worth it to buy a Ravnica Mythic Edition, for those who managed to do so already? Or, alternatively, is it worth it to buy a Ravnica Mythic Edition off the secondary market? This video will seek to answer both those questions while also examining the worth, both in context and in isolation, of the Mythic Edition, as well as its necessity and function to individual players. This video will be an analytical look at the product and will strive to be free of commentary on the gross corporate negligence and disrespect to the local consumer base that this product embodies. If you'd like to hear such commentary, please see my diatribe video here. A Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition contains the following. Twenty-four Guilds of Ravnica booster packs, of which eight contain a premium super art foil planeswalker. These eight booster packs are marked with which Planeswalker they contain, and in addition to the Planeswalker, they have the normal contents of a booster pack with normal randomization. This means that the Planeswalker boosters also have the normal rare or mythic with the same odds as any other booster pack. This is a strange change from the standard 36 booster pack booster boxes, and it begs the question as to why they are not a full 36 booster pack box. The answer, according to Wizards is for optimal drafting, as in, a pod of eight players with three booster packs each requires exactly 24 booster packs. But eight of these booster packs have a Super Art Planeswalker in them, so in order to conduct that 24 pack draft, you'd need to open all eight Planeswalker packs within it. Do you play with the Super Art Planeswalker as legal in the draft, or simply remove them? I suppose that's up to your playgroup, but 36 packs makes more sense, as that allows you to fully choose to just draft 24 regular boosters and either use the eight as prizing or for your personal collection or as part of the draft if you so choose. But this also begs the question, why is there a booster box, be it 24 or 36 packs at all? No one is buying this product for a draft experience. Booster boxes are plentiful at your local game store or <sighs> amazon.com. In many ways, the inclusion of 24 booster packs seems purposefully designed to assuage the guilt of those who would otherwise not purchase expensive premium cards on the secondary market. After years of sets like Modern Masters, players have been conditioned to spend $30 or $40 per player for a premium draft experience, and when viewed in that light, $250 for an 8-player premium draft seems perfectly reasonable. Except that the Mythic Edition is not a premium draft experience. Experience. It's a normal Guilds of Ravnica draft with eight premium planeswalkers added to the draft pool. But even if we take the pricing of $100 for 36 booster packs in a booster box and apply it here, meaning that 24 packs is worth $66.66, if we subtract that from the original price of $250, that means you are paying $183.34 for eight cards. Or if currently buying on the secondary market where the lowest available price is $500, then you are paying $433.34 for these eight cards. Are these cards worth either of those prices? So 
what are these worth? If you were to purchase these eight Planeswalker cards individually in their non-premium versions, the total you would pay is $144.27, largely due to the cost of cards such as Teferi and Liliana, who are both seeing significant modern and legacy play. Elspeth Knight Errant would be $11.08 normally, and if you wanted to buy her premium super art foil individually, it would be $88.43. Liliana, The Last Hope, is currently running $41.16 for the regular non-foil version, and the premium super art of her here is selling for $135.19. Duretti, the ingenious iconoclast, is only going for $9.51, and his card here would cost you $33.73. Nicole Bolas, Planeswalker, is a mere $4.50, while his premium super art version commands $60.43. Ral, is it Viceroy, is $8.18 versus the $51.48 for his premium super art version. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, $44.69. His premium version is going here for $157.88. While Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas, is $14.99 in a regular non-foil version, but $56.11 for this premium super art version. And finally, Veraska, Golgari Queen, while $10.16 normally, is a nice even $69 here. So to purchase all of the premium super art versions individually, you would need to pay $652.25, which certainly makes the $500 price tag on the secondary market seem almost reasonable when you also factor in that you're getting 24 booster packs. Even looking at the non-foil regular cards with a cost of $144.27, the extra $100 for super art as well as the 24 packs of magic is actually not that far from the original selling price of $250, meaning that that, in isolation, the idea of premium cards available in non-premium forms elsewhere for less being sold with magic packs for only a little more than the cumulative worth is kind of a reasonable or at the very least interesting product. After all, many Magic the Gathering players like to bling out their decks, and Legacy and Commander players in particular have a lot that they can use, as well as some modern interest, and obviously an incredible amount of interest from cube players. Assuming, of course, you actually like this art style, as the foiling has been very polarizing among players. This is, of course, a personal aesthetic. I happen to have always been unhappy with the From the Vault foiling, which these appear to have. And though the camera may not be picking it up too clearly, they are already curling right out of the box. And it just makes me feel that this otherwise amazing artwork has been taken and degraded by the foiling process, but again, this is personal taste. If a player wants to spend a little more than the sum of its parts to get premium super art versions of cards that are otherwise easily available on the secondary market, then what is the problem? These types of ultra premium collectible products have historically been well received in other fandoms, and it seems reasonable for wizards to have a product that appeals to this segment of their player base. Well, that brings us to implementation. Even if the Mythic Edition were one of the best products that Wizards had ever produced, you simply cannot consider it in isolation from its disastrous implementation. Players were dismayed, to say the least, to discover that the product would be sold exclusively through the Hasbro toy shop, given its poor track record with other exclusive Magic products, such as the San Diego Comic-Con promos. To further compound the problem, players were given conflicting dates as to when the product would be sold, with Wizards of the Coast saying it would go on sale on the 3rd of October, and Hasbro Toy Shop saying that it would go on sale on the 4th? Keep in mind this was a limited run, so people were clearing their work schedules in order to be free to purchase as soon as it was made available. After not initially coming online when scheduled, and the website already showing lag and other signs of wear from too many users, Wizards of the Coast announced the sale would be moved to the 4th. Then, almost immediately after announcing this, the product went online in the shop. But online is a generous way to refer to the lag and bug-riddled experience that left many of us unable to even make it to our cart. 
Between scalpers and player demand, the product was sold out almost immediately. But even that isn't the end of this ordeal. Many customers were not given confirmations of their order, while others were charged multiple times on their credit card, while still others were given messages saying that the quantity that they had ordered and paid for would not be fully honored. Emails were later sent saying customer service representatives would be contacting people personally, and the entire experience looked terrible for the company, was disenfranchising for the customer, and all around a garbage fire. Add to this that the product was only available to USA and Canadian customers, and you may indeed have one of the single worst PR disasters for the game. While looking at this product in isolation, we see that despite the initial high price tag, there's a lot of value to be had to those interested. However, when looking at Mythic Edition in the context of how and when it was made available, we can also see this product as an embarrassing failure. What does that mean in terms of ultimate grade? Final conclusion. There is absolutely nothing wrong with selling a premium collection of cards that are otherwise available elsewhere for less. If there are players willing to pay premium for a premium product, then this is a product we should see more of. However, implementation is critical. The optimal way to get these cards to players would have been and should be as masterpieces within a set. Failing that, the eight cards individually should have been sold via game stores in a manner similar to From the Vault collections. If sales on the Hasbro Toy Shop are offered in addition, in addition to LGS availability, then there's not a problem, other than the terrible website itself, but when the product is offered only through this website, it is a grade A disaster. Grade? Without considering how it was sold, just as a product itself, in isolation, this is a B. It's still very expensive, and it still curls out of the box. However, within the context of how the product was implemented, this is an outright fail. Again, one of the worst PR disasters in recent memory for Wizards of the Coast. As for how Wizards looks at this product and sees it, Mark Rosewater commented that if the product sells well and sells out, then it will be viewed as a success. Well, it did both those things, and Wizards probably views this as a huge success. But I feel very strongly that success should also be measured in the happiness of the player base. A product like this can be made and sold in a way that not only makes the same amount of money, but in a way that also makes the player base very happy. Comparing those two possible outcomes with the one we got, I maintain this is an outright failure. As for me, what I'd like to do is offer these eight premium Super Art Foil Planeswalkers to you instead. I'm giving them all away, straight from my hand here to yours, to one lucky subscriber. All you need is to be subscribed to my YouTube channel and click the link in the description to enter a chance to win. And unlike Wizards of the Coast, I will happily ship these anywhere in the world. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.